Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, listeners. You know, I'm always honored that you give me time every week, and I know you guys are going to enjoy today's conversation because it's kind of the ultimate in self-care. We're going to be talking about menopause and brain health and what we can do in in our younger years to take care of chronic diseases and what we can do if we've already passed some of these milestones. So with me is Amitra. Mita. Oh, I got it right when I asked her. Amita, so thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, I honestly, I am honored because, you know, the more we talk about this topic, which is a taboo topic, even if it can reach one, two, three, whatever, how many women, it makes my day. So the, thank you so much. You're welcome. So why don't you introduce yourself? I'm sure you can do a better job on your name and give us your background and then we'll just dive right in. Absolutely. So uh, my name is Amita Sharma, and I am not a medical doctor. Big disclaimer here. Uh, I have been actually working in the tech industry in Silicon Valley for the last 20 years, and I had very embarrassing moments of going through perimenopause at work to a point that I was sweating and I thought I was getting a heart attack. And, you know, my menstrual health, like the flow started increase like crazy, crazy person where uh, crazy flow down there. So these were so many embarrassing moments that I started facing when I was just 10, 40. And I'm like, I, I understood when menopause is. I think most of us understand what menopause is. But what we don't understand is that the, the symptoms or the transition going towards menopause can start 10 years earlier, which it started doing for me. And I was completely clueless, no clue what perimenopause is. I didn't even know what this word existed in the dictionary. Certainly, I know I'm dripping every single day when I'm going to the meetings, right? It's not fun. <laughs> and that is my introduction to perimenopause, menopause. <laughs> oh my mine God. was, um, it's like my energy level decreased, my crankiness yeah. level increased, which is never good. <laughs> and I just felt off. And yeah. f- thankfully for me, we had um, in my hometown... Um, a nutrition, well, I don't know what you want to call it. It was a supplement store called the Health Hut. I walked in the, the, the current owner at that time, the previous owner now was an older adult woman in her eighties. And I walked in and I said, you know, my energy level is low, my crankiness is up. And I didn't even get the rest <laughs> of the quote unquote symptoms out. And they handed me this bottle called menopause compound. Oh my complex. God. <laughs> and they said, take this. And I'm like, but I, I, I didn't finish telling you. They're like, nope, money back guarantee. And I took that stuff until I went on hormone replacement therapy almost two years ago. And mostly, I mean, it was I was so accustomed to taking it because it worked. They were totally right. My oh, wow. energy level went back up. The crankiness level went back down, <laughs> fortunately <laughs> for my husband. And it was just wild because, I mean, I just literally felt, you know, I'd be walking the dogs and I just felt bleh, like I was slogging through mud or just, you know, my brain just felt slow. It was very strange and not not uh, fun. And because my mom had Alzheimer's, I couldn't talk to her about it because I don't think she would have remembered very much. So, you know, I was kind of on my own, which I think a lot of us feel that way. Yeah, I think because I was like mid 40s. Okay. It's been, been okay. a while. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's the thing, right? Most of us, I mean, so if you look at the data in the United States, 44% of the workforce is women over 45. So they are definitely perimenopausal. But we don't feel ashamed talking about it at work for sure. I'm telling you, I was like, I'm not talking to anyone. What's happening? I don't even know what to talk in. And they think I'm gone cuckoo. You know, I can't do my work properly. That's the first feeling I got. And I'm sure there are millions of other women that think the same way that I I felt, right? We, we, we feel ashamed. That's how women are wired. I don't know what, what is wrong with them. We don't, we're wrong with us, I, I should say that. Uh, for me, particularly, I did not want to talk to anyone, whether at work or family or anyone, any friend. I like, oh my God, how do I fix it? I didn't know how to fix it and bear it. 
grin it and bear it, right? That's kind of what most of the women go through. But we have to start talking. We have to start learning about it. We have to start uh, understanding what is going going to happen to us when we are in perimenopausal phase. Makes sense. Yeah, I had older, you know, not older than me neighbors, but not necessarily that much older that, you know, they'd be standing there like, oh, my God, here comes another hot flash. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> that was the other thing. Um, they one symptom I didn't get to tell the 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 owner of the health hut um, was that I was having warm flashes, not hot ones. It wasn't wasn't making me sweaty, but all of a sudden I'd feel like I had just drank a large mug of tea, and that's that's a normal occurrence to drink tea. So feeling extra warm was weird, and it started in my chest and went up to my face, which that seems yeah. backwards for drinking warm warm liquids. And that went away too. So I've never oh. really dealt with hot flashes. Oh, so that's don't, great. Don't turn me off now because you're jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're having this conversation because there are ways to deal with it. And the supplement they gave me was all natural. It wasn't like chemicals or drugs or any of that yeah. stuff, which is important to me because I prefer not to put any garbage in my system any, any more than I, you know, I can try, try to avoid it. I'm not perfect, but... <laughs> You know, and I've had experiences with, I don't think doctors know very much about menopause. They're getting better, um, probably because I mean, the population's aging and they don't have a lot of choice. But, you know, I think the biggest concern most women have is the brain fog and then the hot flashes. So, yes, yes. I actually talked to a medical doctor yesterday and 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 she was uh, I was on her podcast and she's older she's sixty five plus older and and she said they are not taught about perimenopause menopause in medical schools at all even I've talked to quite a few younger doctors in their forties they are not taught at all the focus for gynecologists and obstet uh, obstetrician is on surgery and delivering babies and the fertility part of the womanhood rather than afterwards and so that's why the whole you know when you go to a your gynecologist, she doesn't tell you that come back after five years, by the way, you're going to start getting this because it's just not taught. But what is alarming is the data in the United States is 65 years and over. You're talking about women only here. 87% of the women have one chronic condition, 87%, 55 plus 80%. The data is alarming. What are the chances you're not going to, I mean, all of us, or for that matter, I mean, you want to be on the 13% or 20%, not on the 87% uh, side of the fence here, right? Yeah, those are odds are not very good. So when you say chronic condition, can you list what some of those are? Yeah, so in, in what they list chronic condition is diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular, and arthritis. And some uh, some respiratory uh, issues, but but you are on medication uh, most of the time. That is the problem. And then the data on Alzheimer's and dementia: women have more uh, percentage than men. So now, if you put a correlation of why women have more dementia and Alzheimer's, can you imagine women have more heart disease than men? Mostly, heart disease is attributed towards men rather than women. It is not clearly understood. And, and and last week, in fact, government is doing actually great work now. Jill Biden introduced um, a research initiative to understand women's health beyond men menopause. So this is the first step that's happening in this country, which is amazing, which is great. I hadn't even heard about that. So, yeah, that is awesome. I, th I think it's just because the population is aging and you can't it's you can't get away from it as easily as we could maybe a decade ago when the population was a slightly younger than it is now. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm aging. I just had a birthday. So, <laughs> and as most of my listeners know, my paternal grandmother lived to 103. So that's my goal. So that's 46 years more. You guys can do the math. Um, the only <laughs> chronic issue that she had was glaucoma. So I don't know if that qualifies, but she'd had that since I was 12, but she lived to 103 with, you know, pretty much non-existent vision. You know, yeah, no, no, that, that's she great. Was healthy. That no, that's great. I don't think uh, that classifies as a chronic condition. So, so coming back to let's come back now. I think listeners who are over sixty-five and above, 
they can at least start embracing a holistic lifestyle, right? That's because now it's a bit too late because your hormones have done whatever they have done. Unfortunately, um, you know, you've already gone through perimenopause, you've gone through menopause, your estrogen and progesterone have depleted to whatever degree they have. And now the only thing what you can do is one of the big things you can do is embrace a holistic lifestyle. Um, that's uh, and embracing a uh, holistic lifestyle does not mean that uh, you know you stop eating what that means is <laughs> just eat nutrient dense foods right uh, whole foods get rid of processed food get rid of sugar start uh, making some simple exercises simple breathing exercises start learning about that qigong is very good simple yoga restorative yoga is very good so these kind of things if you start embracing it you will start feeling the difference in your uh, quality of life even if you are living with a chronic condition yeah yoga is not as easy as people would think i i do yoga occasionally um yeah the, this past weekend i did well, i did a 30 minute stationary bike ride most of my listeners also know that i'm part of the peloton cult so i did a 30 minute bike ride and a 30 minute um mobility yoga and i was like this is hard <laughs> there was one post they're like that is not happening <laughs> like i can't even get close to that post so <laughs> me too but, me too it's it's hard it's all these acrobatics right in yoga yeah, it's a lot of balance which is important but the yeah. one thing that I, I do 99.8% of the time, I didn't do it today, mostly because I know I'm going to do a stretch tonight, is always do a 10-minute full body stretch after whatever workout I do. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference because mm -hmm. I learned years ago, yeah. um, like if your quads are tight, it pulls on your knees and your back and the same with your hamstring. Like tight muscles tweak other parts of your body and then... Then, you know, you're like hobbling up the stairs because yikes, everything's painful. And my husband does not do enough stretches and he has, you know, crankier muscles than I do. I mean, my, I know when I've done a hard workout because the muscles are complaining, but I, I don't feel like I'm tied in knots quite as badly. So definitely stretching. And the thing that's super frustrating <laughs> is you can build up muscle so much faster than you can build up flexibility. It is amazing how long it has taken me to be able to get further, you know, more flexible. It's crazy. So yeah, stretching, yoga. I like to do bar classes that are a little bit easier than yoga, less um, acrobatics, like you said. <laughs> and, you know, and then some cardio is good for your heart, you know, and um, it's easier on the joints to do like stationary bike or maybe rowing. I've always said, you know, if the bear is chasing me in the woods, I'm going to be lunch because I don't run because I've got creaky knees. So these are all important, you know, easy to incorporate into your life. You know, even with, um, you know, even when you're caregiving, if you've got your family members with you 24 seven, you don't feel like you have time, you can incorporate them. I did a past episode on how to help them with their mobility because that's also important. So, you know, mobility and stretching and strength, all important. Absolutely. I was going to mention breathing. Learn how to do different type of breathing exercises. Breathing is very easy. It does not require any acrobatics, uh, right? And it's usually easier to breathe if you're not doing acrobatics. Exactly, exactly. And, and simple meditation, simple chanting. You know, chanting, uh, you can chant uh, any of whatever you think is appropriate. That will help uh, your stress levels down for sure. There's a direct research on the chanting and, and the, you know, the, the stress level going down. The other thing which uh, older women, 65 plus, can also do is massage. Massaging their body with uh, oil, uh, you know, that is also does not require. You can take a lukewarm oil and, and massage your entire body. Um, with uh, coconut oil or uh, almond oil or sesame oil, that helps you. There's a lot of research that talks about direct correlation of relaxation um, with the abhyanga or, or body massage oil. That's one thing I should incorporate more with the stretching. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. So and even uh, getting an oil bath in your on your head helps as well. I mean, these are the things, uh, there's, again, a direct research. If you put hot oil on your head for a continuous 15 minutes or so, 
there is a direct correlation of having a good, better night's sleep when you do that, as opposed to, uh, you know, if most of the, uh, most of women have problems sleeping at night because of all kinds of symptoms that we are facing during the day, right? I know a lot of women have like night sweats and, you know, the hot flashes, those are definitely disruptive. Um, I sleep really hot. So, you know, we have a, a ceiling fan that my husband loves to have going, but I find if it's off by the middle of the night, it's like, I'm getting too warm. You know, <laughs> got to kick off some covers <laughs> or get up to use the bathroom, turn the fan on. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, don't, I don't sweat, but yeah. it's close. It's definitely, it feels, I mean, it's been so long. I don't remember if I slept that warm when I was younger or not. <laughs> These aren't things you keep like in the front of your mind for later on. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Sleeping is so important. I mean, that's what the problem is. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of data for women having low productivity during these years. And the reason is if you are facing as a woman, if you're having heart flashes, night sweats or whatever, you're not going to be able to sleep at night properly. And sleep deprivation can cause your productivity brain fog. It's all a vicious circle here. And then the brain fog leads to your productivity going down. And then there goes your mood swings up and down. So all this is all correlated, whether we like it or not. Uh, what's happening to us when our hormones are fluctuating and going on a roller coaster right here. So is our mood. So is so is so are we going on a roller coaster right here, right? Mm-hmm. It's definitely not not fun. Um, so have you ever run across research that talks about the hormone fluctuation and, you know, like, well, do we know why it causes brain fog or do they have any guesses as to why it, because I always kind of assumed people who had worse brain fog in perimenopause and menopause to be more at risk for maybe a dementia. That's probably a pretty loose assumption. <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor either. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it is a loose assumption. The reason being is that uh, when we, uh, as women, start getting into perimenopause, our hormones are going to start going down. And by the time we are in menopause, most of the hormones are the estrogen and progesterone. These two female sex hormones is what we call them, are getting depleted as we start aging. So now the estrogen is very good for your brain. And as it starts depleting, as we start getting older, then it starts impacting what we call it is the little bit of a memory or a brain fog is, you know, short lapse of memory, what we see, right? Oh, I forgot something. I forgot a phone number. I forgot that. So, so estrogen has a key to our brain here. And that could be one of the reasons because of the menopausal years after your menopause, your estrogen has gone down. There is a correlation of estrogen and brain fog. And that could potentially lead to dementia if you don't change at that time your diet, your nutrition, you, you know, all the things that you need to feed your brain over here, your memory. Um, it could um, lead to that. And some women might need hormone replacement therapy. You know, uh, you need to consult someone who is qualified for that. But on the other hand, the, some of the holistic therapies can be incorporated uh, at any time. Are there foods that are like more estrogen? What is the word? Mm -hmm. Like, so that there's, well, so yeah. what foods do we eat to help keep the estrogen level not, not quite mm -hmm. so low? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I was going to talk about. You can modify, all of us women should modify our diet when we start getting into this age group. So we talk about the nutrient dense diet. Do not cut on calories. We women have a habit of cutting down on calories and trying to fit into the one size down dress. I mean, that's like never ending, no matter who we are, what where we come from. Phytoestrogen is a is a compound that's found in some of the plant-based uh, foods that are typically uh, like in broccoli, in cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. Um, you know, so the the look for these. Try to incorporate those these kind of cruciferous vegetables in your diet on a daily basis if you can. It will help because they have that compound of phytoestrogen that is a natural estrogen that goes in your body, and that's the best way to consume. One of the best ways actually to consume estrogen 
is to uh, include this in your diet on a daily basis. The other thing is include some healthy fats in your diet, right? That's um, good for your brain health. Amazing. All the nuts, soak up on nuts, seeds, all the seeds, right? Avocados, clarified butter, ghee. It's good for you. I don't know how many listeners understand what ghee is. It's basically clarified butter. You can get it anywhere nowadays in Whole Foods or any supermarket, but don't do, I, I don't do it every day. But just, you know, incorporate that into your weekly routine, however you think is appropriate, two or three times a week is what I do. It's just a little dollop of clarified butter. I put it in somewhere, something. I don't just eat it raw. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. It's interesting. It frustrates my husband, but the older I get, the less red meat I want. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know red meat's not the best for us, so I kind yeah. of always felt that that was a positive it's like can my body's really kind of tell me eh, not so interested in a steak you know occasional hamburger is nice but for the most part you know i just don't i don't really want it and I, i'm wondering it's listening to my system has probably been helpful but you know there's just times like there was one day he asked me well what do you what do you want for dinner he was running out of dinner ideas like I really want something vegetarian, which makes him groan because <laughs> he's doing specific bodybuilding for older men. Yeah. And, you know, I keep reminding him that protein does not mean dead animals. You know, yes. chia, chia seeds have lots of protein. Yeah. Um, we have an awesome um, Instapot recipe for um, split pea soup that you start with the dried peas mm-hmm. and you throw them in the Instapot with, I don't remember, I think it's it's several cups of you know, vegetable or chicken broth. And, you know, in like 20 minutes, you have this incredible um, split pea soup. I mean, we've had it multiple times because it's Mm -hmm. so easy to make. It's basically like dump, press the button. And, you know, by the time you're ready for lunch, it's more than done. And so it's, it's delicious. And he's not really a big soup person. So I'm really glad we've discovered a vegetarian thing that he really likes. Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. No, no, that's good. And I was going to talk about is that red meat, you should try to um, limit as much as you can. It's not good for you because it's hard to digest, right? That is the main reason is that chicken and fish is easier. You know, if you still want to continue your meat diet, that's okay. But include plant-based diet at least three or four days a week if you can. I have become almost 100% plant-based. I I include fish because fish is good for your brain. So I try to include fish once a week. So, you know, it's good for your memory health and all those things. Uh, So these things are important. And the other thing is, you know, uh, brain health, we are talking about brain health here. Brain and gut is directly connected with the vagus nerve. So now, if your gut health is not good, which most of as we start aging, our gut health also starts going down. Sometimes we have constipation, all these things are not going to good, good for your brain health as well. So Focusing on your gut health, making sure your gut is clean every single day is very, very important. Yeah, I've started eating a lot more yogurt bowls for breakfast. One, because the husband has cooked so many eggs that he's killed me for (laughs) eggs. I'm like, 
dude, I don't want any more eggs. Like, ugh, like, <laughs> no. <laughs> and the, the other reason is, I don't know if anybody can tell, but I have like very almost hoarse sounding voice sometimes. And it cracks like I'm a 14 year old boy going through the change. Oh my God. <laughs> um, that's really annoying when my voice cracks because I'm not, I'm not a pre uh, adolescent boy, <laughs> period. Never happened. <laughs> Will not be there. Um, but I have, I guess there's a new thing going around called silent reflux where instead of having heartburn, you get this hoarse voice and cracking voice and just weird throat stuff. And one of the things they told me to, you know, re reduce how much you eat is eggs. And my son-in-law said, oh yeah, they're, they cause a lot of gas. And I don't think he meant the stuff that's embarrassing, but just like in your system, because he's got IBS. My daughter has Crohn's disease. So gut health oh is God. kind of a, t a typical topic for us. <laughs> Plus my family starts talking about gross things all the time. It's a, it's a bad <laughs> problem, <laughs> but it's interesting because I, we had, I think we had, oh, we had oatmeal and he plopped this big pile of scrambled eggs on my plate. And I'm thinking, man, that's a big pile of eggs. And then we do mix it with um, the egg beaters. So the stuff that's mostly yeah. egg whites. Yeah. So it's a little bit better for you, but, um, I had a harder time with my workout. I was just very breathy. I just felt like, just like the breathing felt more raw. Now the garage is very cold right now, so that doesn't help, but I'm like, I have a feeling it's the eggs. So we've, we're, you know, I'm switching up when I'm eating and it's an interesting that I feel better eating a yogurt bowl that I do oatmeal with scrambled eggs, which most people would think is pretty healthy too. So I'm going to have to do oatmeal and fruit and I don't know, something <laughs> got to kind of get rid of those eggs, which is good because eggs are still not cheap. Oh yeah, buys... yeah, yeah, absolutely. Egg. I mean, gut, for gut health, you can do prebiotics, probiotics, fermented food. I, I try to ferment my all kind of things ferment, you know, like peppers, you know, carrots, even onions. You put some little vinegar and you let it kind of sit in the sun. And then fermented foods are really great for your gut health as well. You know, these are things, something kimchi, um, these kind of things, you can do it uh, and not that difficult. And they're actually quite yummy because, you know, they got a little sour taste, right? Once they, once you ferment them, the fermented foods are quite yummy. Yeah. I'm going to have to try fermented carrots. I've done pickled onions for yeah. sandwiches. Those are, yeah, that's yummy. But, you know, fermented carrots mm -hmm. because you got the sour mm -hmm. and the sweet from, oh, I bet you, oh, I'm going to have to Google that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I got this idea was going to these Mexican restaurants. You know, uh, they have the carrots and the jalapeno peppers and the onion as one of the condiments when you go do all these salsas. And and I was in Mexico uh, recently, and they served that. And oh my god, it was so yummy! And I asked them, I said, "What the heck do you do?" So I just we just put it in the vinegar and let it sit there for a couple of days, and it's so good! Oh my god! Um, and pickled uh, cucumbers, you know, we, you know, we get them in the supermarket, but you could do it yourself. Things like that, you know, if you start including it, cucumbers are also very um, uh, cooling, right? So that can help with your heart flashes as well. And then it's like we were talking about a vicious circle. So all these things, if we start incorporating it, it starts making difference. Yeah, that makes sense. My husband doesn't like pickles, so we don't have pickles that often. But now I'm going to start putting pickles on my sandwich. And I'm okay. going to do the pickle, <laughs> the um, fermented carrots. That sounds really good. Now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Me too. <laughs> That's what happens when you, you do a yogurt bowl for breakfast and then you do a workout. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I just use these fermented veggies, what, what you call it, you know, for sandwich, and I'll just make like a veggie patty for all the, from all these uh, sweet potatoes and uh, even garbanzo beans. I'll soak it up at night, right? And in the morning, I'll just um, with the puree, um, onions and some sweet potatoes, and it's almost like a falafel bowl, uh, falafel ball actually, not a uh, right. And then you can just, you don't have to, to fry it. You can just uh, kind of make into a, something and then shallow fry it, uh, you know, and eat your vegetable like that. It's still yummy. It's not like you're eating boiled vegetables, which all of us think, oh, my God, I have to eat this now, right? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound too appealing. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the, oh, the other thing that I've started doing recently is I make my own hummus. Oh, yeah. And I made a um, sweet corn hummus. Oh. which has significantly less olive oil in it than the red mm -hmm. pepper garlic hummus yeah. that I've made, yeah. which is good. 
Um, and I had to start doing that because I needed something with protein. You know, I get hungry yeah. about four o'clock and yeah. I was having a hard boiled egg and yeah. a piece like an apple. Well, yeah. okay. I'm not supposed to be having the egg, so I got to come up <laughs> with something else. And the um, sweet corn hummus tastes amazing on carrots. It actually tastes better than on chips or bread or any of that stuff. I don't know oh, what, wow. why the two of them taste so good together, but yeah. And it's just easy. Just dump and blend and <laughs> taste and make it so you like it and move on. And, you know, my golden retriever who eats everything, she likes it too. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a, that's a big validation, right? Right there. You know, she eats uh, everything but celery. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, celery, even I can't eat. Oh my God. But mm. I was going to say Mediterranean diet is excellent. If you can, whatever you can incorporate for that, you know, all the dishes, like uh, even the tabbouli and uh, anything that you can incorporate if in your, uh, during the week diet, Mediterranean diet is great. Yep. And then, you know, and there's the dash. So there, that's for the heart health. And there's yeah, what is it, the mind it, diet combines the two. That's right. That's right. I mean, I see, I personally uh, just follow a simple plant-based diet. You can't go wrong. Uh, lentils and, uh, you know, lentils and plant-based and nuts and seeds. And, uh, you know, I talk about the healthy fats rather than uh, doing, oh, let me just go do this diet. Remember the Atkins diet used to be there. And then there was like no carb diet. Oh my God. And people stopped eating carbs. Suddenly, that's not good either. You need your carb, your complex carbs. You you don't need to starve yourself, right? All these things, I think, just follow basic rules of eating a, a, just a healthy meal. Uh, every meal should be healthy. You should have protein, carb, and healthy fats. If we follow the simple rule, you'll be fine. I had, years ago, I had a friend and her husband who did the Atkins diet. We had um, a get-together where, you know, there's desserts. And so I specifically, not not being very familiar with the Atkins diet, specifically chopped up watermelon for the two of them so they could have something sweet and refreshing. It was summertime. Yeah. And I was stunned when they're like, oh, no, no, we don't eat that. And I'm like, what? Like watermelon is so good for you. Yeah. And the longer they were on this eat all the things meat, like mm -hmm. he had, I don't know, ridiculous amount of sausages or bacon or something. I'm like... I'm like, I don't care if you're losing weight. That can't be healthy. Didn't yes. you, know, you didn't need um too many brain cells to realize that wasn't a good thing. <laughs> but their skin started getting like almost yeah. gray. Yeah. She didn't have the thickest of hair and it got thinner. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't care what you're doing. It's like that is not looking good on you people. And of course it's not sustainable. Like I ugh, I can't I I have never, ever wanted to just eat only meat. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're depriving yourself, the, 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 you know, of other nutrients that are so important for your body. And sure enough, it's going to start impacting your hair. A lot of women, even men, we know that they start losing hair, right, as we start aging. And uh, it's just, uh, and the skin starts getting uh, loose and all kind of wrinkles and all kind of things. But you can prevent all that if you just eat right. <laughs> Don't worry about the size lower than what you are. Uh, oh, I, I mean, all, all of us do that. Oh, I need to fit into size whatever X, Y, Z. But that's not the intention. You need to be healthy, right? I mean, There's a Peloton instructor I like very much. She's in her early 50s. And she said, you know, health success is much greater than a smaller pair of pants mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's like i love that because yes. you know she's healthy she's not the smallest peloton instructor on the app you know yeah and it's you know it's just it's a great message although this morning the class that i did with her um she so she's in the perimenopause the kind of the end of perimenopause mm -hmm. and she was in a, she does um, velodrome cycle racing, mm -hmm. which sounds terrifying because there's no brakes and there's one gear. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a great way to crash. But she was saying that she's never, she hit a, a very high um, exercise output on the Peloton bike and she's never been able to hit it since. And she blames that on all the changing hormones. So is, is that in uh -oh. her head or is that actually a thing? No, no. I mean, it, look, there is data. I mean, if she, you said she's in her early 50s, so more than likely she's hitting menopause or she already has hit menopause. We don't know that. 
but her her hormones have gone down right so if uh, if uh, and and the, along with that the energy level can be impacted we know that the chronic fatigue is one of the symptoms so i don't know her at all but i'm just assuming that maybe she's she's got this chronic fatigue symptoms maybe her metabolism has changed maybe she's not trying so maybe she's not changed her diet the way she should have earlier we talked about that so so this could be an impact absolutely because the way, if she's a, a trainer as you were saying you know she's definitely doing more exercise than you and i combined probably probably, <laughs> probably. so then she needs a different type of diet and if she hasn't adjusted that along with her hormone fluctuations then there is a possibility that she is feeling fatigued right So possible. so this could be it, it, it is possible absolutely and and the, the problem is for us women uh, it's too late for us to get the hormone testing because now we don't know what the what the baseline is they're already going crazy anyway right mm-hmm. i don't know what the, like they're going to be down we know that so what good is it if i can get it down the the smart thing is if there are any women here in the 35 and above to get your hormone tested when they, you are at a baseline you know the, that's the baseline of your hormones where you operate uh, optimal <laughs> right your performance is optimal at this hormone baseline so now at age 50 she has no clue what her optimal mass uh, optimal was because she she probably didn't get her tested at that time no one we don't think like that i don't i've never done got my hormones tested right <laughs> And they just fluctuate all month long anyway. Exactly. Is yeah, that's a problem. Even if we are uh, like are younger, we have our menstrual period, so the hormones are fluctuating in, at that time as well. <laughs> yeah, I went on hormone replacement therapy because was it July of 22? Okay. I'd oh, I'd had hormonal migraines almost every month for like 40 years. July 2022. I had a migraine so bad I literally could not complete thoughts, could not complete sentences, and it made me so angry to constantly be told, "Oh, it's stress. Oh, it's it's the chocolate you ate. Oh, it's the caffeine you oh, blah, 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 blah. all this bol- malarkey." And I'm like, "They know there's a connection. They don't necessarily know what yeah. the connection between hormones and Alzheimer's is, but I have a family history of dementias, so okay. I'm just going to try it. My mom did hormone replacement therapy, but she did it through her general physician. It made the migraines worse, so she oh abruptly threw out the hormones the doctor gave her. That was a fun time for all of us. So I was very hesitant. Yeah. But and I have to do another blood test, which I hate because they you have to fast, which I'm I get up, I have my healthy breakfast, I do my workout. I hate having to get up and drive to the lab and they take like three or four vials. They take a lot of blood. So they do a lot of testing and it took a couple of tries to get everything balanced, but I have not ever had a migraine since 20 July of 2022 and September of 22 we went my husband had a health issue and things were very stressful and geez, I didn't have a migraine. So I guess it wasn't stress. <laughs> that's great because hormone therapy sometimes can work for, which is great it worked for you but sometimes it, it it doesn't work for some of the women and 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 cancer survivors you know they can't take hormone replacement therapy as well that's the problem so you don't know until uh, like the all, what you were saying you had to get yourself tested talk to a, a qualified um, person who understands the hormone replacement therapy there's so many different types of it nowadays bioidentical hormones is is more natural so i'm not an expert here on hormone replacement therapy but we need to get ourselves make sure that we're consulting with the right practitioner or physician to, if we go that route yeah this these guys that's all they specialize in is basically hormone um, replacement therapy yeah, heart, yeah. for women yeah. male and female for whatever reasons men need their own replacement sometimes yeah. but even having the success that i've had I'm still interested in in the holistic version because one of the questions I need to ask after this next blood test is, you know, definitely post menopausal here because I'm 57. So, how long do we keep yeah. doing this? Because I don't think you take it forever. I don't don't want to take this stuff for 46 more years. Or the hormones? It's, yeah. Yeah, it's not cheap. Yeah, it's not cheap and then yeah, it's also uh well depending on type of hormones you are taking, then uh it's better if you 
we can figure out a holistic way to to balance the hormones, right? That I, I think naturopathic doctors are very well qualified uh, as well. Some of the naturopathic doctors who are specialized in specifically in the hormone, bioidentical hormones, I should say that. Um, that could be a way for us to talk to them, uh, you know, naturopathic doctors, um, because they understand the herbs and the supplements and all the natural products better than uh, uh, other medical doctors, for sure, because that's all they have learned in their, uh, you know, education. Yeah, I'm going to have to find a naturopathic doctor at some point soon, because... Yeah. Um, just because I think it's important, you know, but I'd be... Um, having gone on a big weight loss journey and doing this podcast where I've learned tons about brain health, I feel yeah. like I've gotten a lot of the benefits without having the personal one-on-one -on -one with that kind of doctor. So I think I'm up, up at that point where I should probably do that. Yeah. So we've talked about exercise and meditation and breathing and eating. Is there any one last thing we should discuss before I let you go help other people this morning? Absolutely. Uh, essential oils is another thing that I wanted to add. It's it's important. It's, it could be very beneficial. We talked about the oil massage, right? And then hypnotherapy is, believe it or not, it, it has a data, it has a research evidence that helping women uh, calm themselves down with IBS. You were talking about your son-in-law having IBS, heart flashes, all this. So to look at that. Acupressure, acupuncture is also has a ton of research. Um, some women don't like needles poking in their skin, but acupressure is another one that you could learn about that. Uh, Qigong, we, it's easier than acrobatic yoga. That's something that you could take a look at it. Laughter yoga does not require acrobatics. Uh, again, ton of research using laughter yoga and stress and helping with the brain health and all these things. So there's a lot of things which we obviously cannot cover, but... Uh, it's overwhelming, but take a small step. That's all I have to say. Yeah. So add some um, pickled carrots, some more broccoli. Yes. Breathe. Give yourself a massage. <laughs> yeah. There's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, just in our conversation, like I already said, I was like, I'm like really, I must be hungry because I'm really kind of hung up on the pickled carrot or the oh, no, fermented carrots. Yeah. No, even um, jalapeno peppers, right? The peppers are good for you. If you pick, if you kind of put it in a pickle, does it? You know, the the hot part of it goes down a bit. If you just have raw jalapeno pepper, which I can't imagine having that, right? Oh my god! So if you pickle it, it's actually it tastes quite yummy, and it's it's the hot the hot part goes down. Interesting. So try that. <laughs> I'll have to, we'll have to wait until after we get through this silent reflux stuff because i'm really okay. tired of my voice cracking <laughs> i'm tired of sounding like a yes. 14 year old boy <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's weird it's weird because you don't connect it to what you're eating yeah. and you know of course they say well it could be stress everything is stress we know that stress is bad for us yes. i do not feel stressed you know i just feel like there's everyday frustrations or irritations that's normal yeah. And yeah. I handle them normally. So, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't get all wound up about too yeah. much. So I don't think it's stress, but I, I think it must be the only, I told my husband this the other day. I said, you know, since you've been doing this bodybuilding, you keep adding more and more freaking eggs to our breakfast. <laughs> and as I mentioned, I like variety. Yeah. Um, it kills him because yeah. it's like, oh, I love this dish and you'll probably never eat it again. I'm like, I'll eat it yeah. again. Just don't serve it to me next week. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, you know, once or twice a month for the same dish is fine, but he has really killed me for eggs, which <laughs> is probably good since I'm not supposed to be eating too many of them. But I also find they're like really healthy for your brain. Mm -hmm. So when I went on the weight loss journey, yeah, I was just eating egg whites, which are not super filling because mm -hmm. there's no fat. Yeah. So there's no healthy fat. And so, you know, now it's like, I guess some eggs, I don't know. It's like, that's like tired of having to keep changing my nutrition to balance out whatever's going on in my body. It's frustrating. I know. I know. You know what I do um, is that I take some veggies. I, we, we were talking about the cruciferous vegetables, some some carrots, some, you know, whatever, spinach. Uh, and I saute it. You know, I literally take a uh, sauteed, lightly sauteed, and I put that a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of uh, spices, herbs, 
and a little bit of a lemon juice and salt and pepper. Oh my God, it's so yummy in the morning and it's still nutritious and filling. So try that. I could try that. So the other thing that I like that I have to keep reminding him and we kind of laugh because years ago, my daughter and I did the, the 23andMe DNA testing. And so my family <clears throat> last name is Graham. So Scottish mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. our DNA came back Scottish, English, French, Irish, Welsh, um, on my dad's side of the family. So she's got a little bit more as the Scandinavians, like, mm -hmm. you know, they tell you be prepared for a surprise. And I was like, okay, show me something that'll surprise me. I was ready. <laughs> I was excited to learn something. And what I learned was I am 100% white mutt. Oh, wow. So that was boring. <laughs> Super boring. <laughs> but I love the pinto beans on a slice of like wheat bread or mm -hmm. sourdough bread. And what mm -hmm. I do is, you know, warm them up in the pan. I put in a little bit of the hot honey and a little bit of maple syrup to yeah. kind of cut the heat. And yeah. so you kind of got like a, almost a sweet and sour kind of taste on the beans with the yeah. toast. Yeah. And then normally we do, um, it's, um, oh no, collard greens. Cause kale is, I don't know what you got to do to make kale edible. <laughs> I know it's you have to rub it you know that you just oh, rub is that the, okay yeah cause... that's a trick rub it just rub it really hard like you're rubbing whatever and and then put a little bit of lemon juice and let it sit and a little bit of a salt and then after that try it okay because <laughs> that kale's a lot of work so we found collard greens are just as good but I mm -hmm. like what you were suggesting to go with my beans on toast which is a totally English breakfast yes Although I think they yes. usually have a sausage with it or tomatoes Mm -hmm. which I'm also trying mm -hmm. not to eat too many of because that fires up acids in your system. So yikes. Like a lot of the stuff I like to eat, I'm having to limit. So it's, it's interesting, but this has been really fascinating. Um, I'm glad that more people are talking about menopause in this time of life because like, the population is aging. And so, you know, we better start talking about this soon or else there can be a whole bunch of people wandering around trying to figure out why they got brain fog. Absolutely. That's why we are talking and that's what you are doing. Um, one funny thing I, want, I, I wanted to say was that I'm watching Outlander and it's all Scottish. So, you know, it's a great show that talks about time travel, which is funny. <laughs> We've been watching Clarkson's Farm on Amazon Prime, okay. which is um, Jeremy Clarkson. I guess he was big mm -hmm. on uh, Top Gear. I'm not really a big car person, so that's not mm -hmm. a show I've watched. He has this thousand acre farm. His farmer decided to retire. So I guess as many, you know, wealthy white dudes, he just assumed he can farm this land and yeah. he's got one helper. Even he can't understand this guy. Oh and my so God. The, the other night I asked my husband, I'm like, is his farm in the Northern part of England? And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, that explains it because that guy sounds Scottish to me. I could be wrong. <laughs> I spent three weeks in Scotland with a pen pal. This is back in yeah. the old days when you actually mailed letters with stamps. <laughs> I know, and, I know. <laughs> and she lived next door to a guy named Mark Smith. Mm -hmm. And three weeks I was there, never once could figure out what the heck that guy was saying. I'm like, I know this is English, but none of it sounds like English to me. <laughs> and that's how this guy's and it cracks well, me. Yeah, it cracks me up that because this this guy is talking and this Jeremy Clarkson's going, yeah, uh-huh. And you can tell that there is no communication I happening. I, they say A-Y-E is means yes, I. Yep. I, right? I, and I, it's, it's <laughs> very, the, so Gaelic is very guttural. Yes. And so it, a lot of times it sounds like, could you swallow that mush before you start talking to me? <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I'm watching the subtitles below. So then, so I'm like, okay, now I know what he's saying. I wonder if <laughs> it's funny subtitles. because it's English, but I'm still watching the subtitles below to make sure I understand the whole thing. Yeah, and it's like, oh, so just so funny because I'm like, this English dude can't understand this other English dude. That cracks me up. <laughs> I and know, seriously. This we've just, I think we're on episode four, but it's like. This Jeremy Clarkson is not doing himself any favors trying to farm his farm. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is just a comedy. I know. And, and, I know. It, and there's days when it's like, you just want to yell at the TV, like, why are you doing this? <laughs> and he keeps taking on new projects. Ooh, I'll add chickens. Ooh, I'll add sheep. Oh, I'll add, I'll add a farm stand. It's like, 
one product, like, dude, like, master one, th- master the sheep thing. Okay. Yeah. Then move on to the chick. <laughs> so, and then maybe you'll understand your neighbor who does not necessarily speak the same English that this Englishman speaks. <laughs> so, I know that's the funny part. <laughs> so there you guys. So we've given you some super healthy self-care tips and some TV tips. <laughs> Absolutely. We didn't want to leave our audience without giving TV tips and talking about Scottish blood here since you mentioned Scott. <laughs> That's me. I come from yes. a very bloodthirsty clan, according to lore. Uh-oh. So where can people find out more about you and what you're doing besides just showing up on podcasts talking about brain health and menopause? <laughs> oh, my God. And Scottish blood. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we had too much fun. Yeah, but please check out our website, www.narishdog.com. And we are coming up with an app. You know, some of the some of the women might not like the app because, you know, people are so tired of the app. But the only reason for us coming up with the app was to make it affordable. So we are pricing it at $10 per month so that women who are going through perimenopause and beyond can access self care by them by you know by themselves but if some women want hand holding and, and they want a high touch which you know most of us do then we have an option that they can have a concierge services as well you know they have their own naturopathic doctor we were talking about that and a yoga therapist a breathing specialist or a dietitian so so we are trying to educate women on how to better take care of yourself um, that, you know, using holistic therapies during the perimenopausal years and beyond. So that's what I'm trying to do. Awesome. Well, as always, that link to the website will be in the show notes. You could just click on it, go there, learn everything in more detail than we had time for today. I thank Amita for coming on and giving us some laughs and some, some good <laughs> advice on brain health and, you know, I, I think taking care of yourself and your brain is the ultimate self-care. So I hope you guys incorporate some of these. And if you try any of the things we've talked about, like the fermented carrots, let me know what you think. Or if you have any um, vegetarian breakfasts I can introduce to my life, let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. So thank you so much, Amita. And I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.